Battlefield is coming back in an entirely new way. Well, that's at least according to EA CEO Andrew Wilson in the company's latest investor report and conference call on May 9th. As reported by GameStop and GamesRadar, EA believes that Battlefield will be a meaningful part of EA's future, but what is that future actually going to look like? And do we want Battlefield back in an entirely new way? Battlefield 2042 is without a doubt the worst Battlefield in the franchise. And I know every time I say that, I get people in the comments that say, well, uh, no man, you just don't get it. The, the operators are cool and the math, no, okay? I'm not entertaining that. Just look at the Steam charts. 2042 right now has less players than Battlefield 5 and even Battlefield 1. And yes, I know Steam Charts does not show players on console, but it shows an overall trend. And that trend is that the majority of Battlefield players right now prefer to not play Battlefield 2042. Don't get mad at me, get mad at EA, since ultimately they were the ones who made a game which we really do not enjoy playing. The development of this game is doing exactly the opposite of what the Battlefield players want. It's taken now, what, almost two years to add simple things like a score Board. We just had squad voice added last year, and a key feature now in update 4.11, which was literally released last month, April of 2023, was all chat. Yes, it's 2023 and we're celebrating adding all text chat to a Battlefield game? At the end of the day, does EA even really care that much about what we want? Unfortunately, I don't think so, because if you look at the numbers in this report, purchasing a game like Battlefield is so far down on the list of their priorities. Between March of 2022 and March of 2023, nearly 75% of EA's revenue came from live services. And in the report, they highlighted record engagement with FIFA 23, and it's actually now on track to be the biggest title in the franchise, which is notorious for predatory gambling models with player packs for the FIFA Ultimate Team. And did you know that if you couldn't spend enough of your own money opening packs, there are even websites now where you can get your fix for free and just open made up packs? I don't even know what's happening here, but it sure as hell feels like everyone who owns FIFA has just some undiagnosed gambling addiction. Anyways, Battlefield now has a pretty good track record of not being successful when it comes to live service models, which is ironic since EA as a whole is extremely successful with live service. Battlefield 5 first tried to branch out and introduce skins like Call of Duty, and the player base collectively said no. They also tried to create a battle royale mode with Firestorm, and I will admit, it was actually kind of fun, but the support for the game mode and the overall development of it was just, it was such an afterthought. It was almost like EA assumed that players would just throw money at the product since it was a BR. With Battlefield 2042, EA obviously looked to games like Apex Legends and Rainbow Six Siege and Call of Duty Warzone in order to really draw in the player base with unique operators and cosmetics and seasons, but it once again just fell so completely flat. Hazard Zone was another new game mode which also tried to attract the looter shooter fan base, but it was done so horribly that I don't think anyone played it after the first few days. Although some are complaining because Warzone 2 is a bit of an issue, the DMZ population is actually pretty strong. So it's not the game mode that's failing, but Battlefield, once again, just can't execute something that isn't straight Battlefield. And then after all that, there was Portal, which we all thought was going to be amazing. Not only could you create new game modes, but you could experience the past Battlefield games too in a better engine. And to be honest, uh, playing Portal just reminded me that I could just exit out of Battlefield 2042 and literally play Battlefield 4 if I wanted to. EA has been trying to bring back Battlefield in an entirely new way since 2016. And although I really liked Battlefield 1, I'm not blind to the opinion, and it is a completely valid opinion, that Battlefield 4 was the last great Battlefield game, and that one came out in 2013. With crazy pickups and behemoths, I, I get it. it. It's not like your OG Battlefield. And that means that the last great Battlefield game that the player base can more or less all agree on was released about a decade ago. Go. What is going on with Battlefield? When I hear EA's strategy is building games and experiences that attract and entertain massive online communities across platforms, across business models, across geographies, and we think that Battlefield is going to be a meaningful part of our future, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not excited? I, I don't even really believe it. The fact that live service is what gaming executives, at least at the AAA level, are going for is proof enough that that is... 
I don't want to say it's a lie, but I, I don't think they're telling the whole truth. The proof is in the numbers, and EA's money says otherwise. Over the past seven years, EA's revenue from live services has quadrupled from $326 million in the first quarter of 2016 to $1.6 billion in 2023. And just to clarify, in case y'all were wondering on the title here, net bookings, according to EA, is defined as products and services sold digitally or physically. So it doesn't really matter where the game or add-on is purchased, since I do know a common argument by some fanboys are, well, I, I bought my Battlefield copy in the actual box for my Xbox, so that's why the numbers, no, okay? It's all accounted for digitally, box, it doesn't matter. These are the actual numbers of where EA is getting its money. And overwhelmingly, it's not from purchasing the video game. It's not surprising that live services are EA's revenue generator, and that online engagement and content is what executives are looking for. Battlefield 2042 has completely failed in that aspect. I mean, even in this report here, which was published in February of 2023, just a few months ago, they mentioned that Battlefield 5 is the go-to example of a successful live service game, not Battlefield 2042. I, it's, it's just, it's laughably bad at this point. If Battlefield is going to be part of EA's strategy, then it has to be made in a way that can add value more than just the game's price tag, since even that failed to meet expectations. A year ago, the CFO stated that 2042 sold fewer units than EA expected, and that the franchise itself actually makes up less than 10% of EA's overall revenue. It's definitely reassuring as an investor to learn that a failing game doesn't hurt the bottom line, but as someone who's playing the franchise and who's played the franchise since Battlefield 1942, it really is shocking to be reminded that the player base really isn't that big comparable to everything else that they make. And even if the player numbers are bigger than 10%, well, they're not being converted into money, and that's what executives care about. Personally, I really don't know what the future of Battlefield is, but I would not be surprised to see some form of free-to-play Battlefield game released with the theme of something like Bad Company 2. Despite what a lot of people think, the executives of EA aren't stupid. The executives of a lot of these AAA games aren't stupid. That's why they re-released Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and then they released it again, and then they released it as Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. People like playing what they like to play, and EA wants to make money, so I wouldn't put it past them to try and do something which tugs at our emotional response to Battlefield, like a Bad Company revival. However, it wouldn't make sense for them to do it unless they injected more free-to-play business models in the game in order to make it far more profitable of a series than it has been in the past few years. All signs point to Battlefield announcing a release within this next year or so since it lines up with the roughly three-year game cycle that we've seen. But I just don't know if I'm going to be as excited about this one as I have in the past. But what do you guys think? Do you trust EA to save the franchise? Would you play a free-to-play Battlefield game? And would it really just be as simple as releasing a Bad Company 3? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.